Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. In fact, almost I feel almost like at the end of this presentation to, to say there's nothing more to say. <laughs> but permit me, Mr. Speaker, to just sympathize with a few friends and family and persons. Um, I speak of Ralph Henry, my cousin who just passed last week, as an employee at the Ministry of Agriculture. Infrastructure, sorry. Um, a cousin, a brother, a friend. John Francis from Agard, whose family is in there for the great Loloy from behind the College All Stars, Norbert Williams, and so many others. It is the pain and suffering, Mr. Speaker, of the, the, the family members and children that concerns me. I also need to reflect on during Gustav and family, who is still mourning and, 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 and are grieving the loss of their son. And Mr. Speaker, it is difficult times for families when they lose a, love, a lost one, a loved one, somebody that close to them. And if you have not experienced grief, I understand, and I understand why you may feel the way you feel. But when somebody passes, whether the person is a gunman, a murderer, or whoever that individual is, they leave behind children, they leave behind family members who, low, who mourn their loss. And my heart goes out to those who remain behind, for I know too well what it is to grieve. So may the God of comfort visit and comfort the families, children, and other loved ones of those who have died. So Mr. Speaker, with these words of consolation, I rise to support the resolution provided by Section 63.1 1A of the Public Management Act, number 14 of 2020, to allow the Minister of Finance to borrow US 102 million 24 from the Export Import Bank of Taiwan to provide budgetary support for the fiscal year 2022-2023. Mr. Speaker, I want to provide a brief argument to support my argument, my position on this resolution. But Mr. Speaker, it is really captured not in some of the academic textbook. Of course, I have recognized the support from the IMF from the Caribbean Development Bank, from the ECCB, and many multinational organizations who provide funds who have argued and support the trajectory and the policy of this government. But I find it necessary, Mr. Speaker, to borrow from a verse of scripture. And Mr. Speaker, I'm not doing it from a theological standpoint, but more or less just reference and context. And it's really taken from Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 30. And I said it is not theological. I'm not preaching a sermon. <laughs> but I want, to, I want you to listen carefully, Mr. Speaker, to this verse of scripture. And for those of you who are in business, those of you who are in construction, those of you who lead and want to lead this country. So here was Jesus speaking to a crowd of individuals. And he said, Suppose one of you want to build a tower. Wouldn't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and you are not able to finish it, everyone sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Look, chapter 14, verse 28 to 30. And I want to read it again, but I want to repeat some words for emphasis. Suppose one of you, one of you, and think of it, suppose one of you wants to build a tower a tower, something of magnificence, 
something of recognition. Won't you first sit down? Sit down. And this word sit down, I've heard it over and over again, but I will come back to it. Would you first sit down, estimate, estimate the cost, the cost to see if you have enough money, enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and, not, and you are not able to finish it, everyone will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Mr. Speaker, as I contemplated on the words of this scripture, more or less for context in making my brief contribution in supporting the resolution, I, am, I spend all my life at church, and I'm not doing everything the Bible says, but there are some that I do. <laughs> But there are some that I stay close with, and I've always gotten inspiration from Scripture. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the fact that Christ made the statement, it means, therefore, he was saying, it is common sense when he referred to the entire, the entire crowd, and he said, suppose one of you, one of you, there were children, there were politicians, they were farmers, they were scribes and Pharisees, they were all sorts of people in the crowd. But he asked the question to them. It was a general statement and it spoke to common sense. Suppose one of you, and if you look at the seats here today, and if the leader of the opposition, it would also apply. Suppose you want to build a tower. And he asked, wouldn't you first sit down now, I love this word, and I, I ask myself, maybe, maybe my, the grandparents say, Jean Lautantic, I leave Bible Patois. Because when you do not know your place with grown ups, they have that way of asking you to sit down. Assis. At school, sometimes the teacher has to tell you, sit down. Strange enough, but it is not a, strange for us, even in Parliament. There are times they have to tell people, sit down. Sit down. But why is it important to sit down? But before I get to why you must sit down, why you must sit down? In fact, the text says you must estimate, estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete the task. And I tell you, to sit down means you must focus. To sit down means you must consult. To sit down means you must investigate. You must look closely. To sit down means you must decide where you are going. And which path are you going to take the people to? To sit down sometimes, if it is said in the the voice of an Alpha Baptist, it may not sound too nice. Or the Honorable Richard Frederick when he says, sit down. Or even when my grandmother, grandmother said, assis. But the chastisement is important. They're saying to you, think again. So here was Jesus Christ. He said this very important word to sit down. Estimate. And I love this. I said that you know, Christ must have been a quantity surveyor. If not, he understood his father was a carpenter. So he knew what it is to build. Estimate. Find out how much is needed. How much time. But when you cost, you must also take into consideration the consequences of your action. What risk? To, to sit down, to estimate and cost before you build. It is to assess a number of factors that could influence what you do. You see, Mr. Speaker, upon winning the election on July 20, 2021, the Prime Minister had already considered ahead, and in page two of the manifesto putting people first, he stated, my task 
together with my team of able men and women. And I suspect he may have gotten that from Bible as well because it was Jephro, the father-in-law of Moses, who told Moses in the, in the wilderness, get able men and women or else you will kill yourself. My team of able men and women to restore St. Lucia to a level of financial stability to create an enabling environment for wealth creation and employment, particularly among the youth. This was said in the manifesto because the prime minister anticipated the task ahead. The prime minister embarked on a mission of macroeconomic stability. He halted this sort of borrowing as if it were an uncontrolled barrel that have you rushing back and forth to a parliament as if the parliament was a toilet. I mean, this is what it seemed like in the previous administration. Borrowing uh, as if it were a diarrhea, lajijit. You know, you're rushing, always coming back. The prime minister didn't embark because he sat down, sat down, and he contemplated, and we are here today, to determine the path of economic stability, growth, and, pros and prosperity. And much to the chagrin of persons who were expecting the immediate rollout of jobs, contracts, small, medium, and large, we began to investigate where we are and where the people want to go. So the St. Lucia rescue mission of our economy was on the way and it was captured by the IMF because they came in here on September 7th of 2022 and the executive board of the IMF concluded in an article four consultation, it reads, the executive directors noted that St. Lucia's tourism-dependent economy was severely hit by the pandemic. And while there was a significant rebound in tourism in 2021, the recovery remains incomplete as the surge in import prices and high inflation following the war in Ukraine weigh on economic growth. The directors noted the significant challenges ahead of the public balance sheet and it remains under pressure with a sizable fiscal de deficit, high rollover needs, and a sharp increase in public debt, as well as the looming threat of natural disasters. Against this backdrop, they emphasize the need to address fiscal and financial constraints to public and private investment to foster a sustainable, inclusive recovery. Directors concurred that in the near term fiscal policy should focus on protecting the most vulnerable from food and fuel price increases. The IMF concurred with this government that in the near term we should focus on our vulnerable population. Now Mr. Speaker, I listened to my colleague, I guess a friend from Strozel, the parliament rep, the member for Strozel Saltibus, Yes, um, speak to how similar, how similar things were with them. And some of the things that he are hearing here, it sounds similar, of course. And if you go through Hansard for many years, there are some similarities on the air. But what makes the difference is the priority of a government. That's what makes the difference. Not how similar we sound. Of course, we have the same civil servants working, preparing documents. You know, I recall, you know, from secondary school to, to, um, to university, I had one theme of writing my, my, um, my compositions, and it was on science and technology. So I, I got good marks for it from secondary school, so I'm not leaving that topic. So when they asked to choose a topic, I look for it. So, of course, the civil servants who are there over many years serving St. Lucia would write and would provide documentation to various governments. So, there are similarities. But there is a profound difference 
in approach. We did not speak to vulnerable populations. There was action and more action to come. We didn't speak in terms of what do we do with unemployment. There's action taken. And Mr. Speaker, for all of the things mentioned by the Prime Minister and the Minister of Finance as to what these funds are for, I want to represent to this House in a very capsule way the life of an ordinary St. Lucian as experienced by myself and I will show you how it is necessary for the actions of this government and how it plays out. So here was this young mother coming to, this, coming to me, a mother of five. The eldest is 17, 16, 17. The youngest is six. Five children, unemployed. The, fa the, the, the fathers are not supporting, but they are, some of them are unemployed. But she's working. Came to 700 a fortnight, renting at $800 a month. The fathers of the first three say they're not supporting because the first, they, she's using the money for the, for the last two, and the father of the last two say they're not supporting because she's using the money for the first three. Lucy Lake, disconnect. Wasco has moved in, disconnect. This mother comes to the St. Lucia Social Development Fund. This mother comes to the Ministry of Equity. Multiply that by a few thousand. And I ask the question to you, Mr. Speaker. Based on where this mother lives and what is happening in the community, if it's a young man with something, isn't it a reservoir for those who in the guns to attract them because she, he or she wants to help mom pay the bills? Isn't that the situation? This prime minister will not postpone to grow the economy and wait later to address these problems. As said by the leader of the opposition. And this is what makes the difference priority. Because he said it, the, the leader of the opposition said it. That we should grow the economy. We shouldn't use monies and do other things. On, and then we will address these problems. My member from the other side, I'm telling you, that's what makes the difference. That we give priority to intervening in the lives of these individuals while we attempt to rearrange our balance sheets while we, are, we take the time to fix other fiscal situations within our economy. Mr. Speaker, I have to share with this house another little one who is disabled, chronically disabled, my good friend, Thea. And I ask members of this house to pay attention to disabilities because we, this Prime Minister has given me more support for persons with disabilities and for persons who are homeless. This Prime Minister has provided additional resources through the borrowing and very soon you will see that the people in the city of Castries, we will not be feeding them by handing them food. We will be serving them because we'll get a place for them to eat because we are concerned about the dignity of our people. But hear this, Mr. Speaker. Chronically disabled person, physically, facially, mentally, this child is disabled. And we, and yet you go to the Donata school and they tell you, this child is bright. Be careful what you say, because she understands, but cannot speak. And even when we celebrated this 102 years lady in Strozel, to my surprise, as soon as she heard that there was a priest in the midst, she asked, Es my sahan communion. <laughs> and again, I was shocked. We usually decide for people like that. But here, what she was able to say, I want communion. And I asked myself, to what extent that we do not serve persons, we decide to give them what we believe they want. To what extent that we believe people who are disabled do not understand and we say anything in their presence and we hurt them even more. 
This Prime Minister has provided support to uplift our people, to take them to the level of dignity, not just to hand them food in the, in the boulevard, but to find a place for them to sit and serve them, minister unto them, have them to say the grace of meals if they care to, because we care about the least of our people. That makes a fundamental difference. That's different. You see, it is different when this prime minister will borrow to reinstate the fund, the, the, the distress fund. Whereas the former administration said it's not too important, it's just a little bit of money. We can do something else with that money. There is a difference. There are similarities in sound, but difference in heart. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, I understand the work of all of the various agencies of government. But this Prime Minister has charged me with the responsibility to lead a critical agency. And I stand here to support this resolution to borrow. Because it also represents a critical and important demographic within St. In St. Lucia. And like our Prime Minister said, no one will be left behind. No one. Everyone is included in this mission. He is going to restore St. Lucia. That prosperity is for everyone that can be prosperous and that everyone will be served. So my colleague, and I dare say today that you're representing not just your constituency, but even the leader of the opposition who is not there, because it's just the two, so I'm sure that he may have left some instructions for you. I am telling you that we are concerned. And I can tell you, when you made, the, when you made mention that um, <laughs> All, par all parliamentarians should be treated equally. I almost chastised the member for, 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 for Francais Jacques Souffre, who intervened with the um, SME program in Souffre before Castries Southeast. And I heard how successful it was, and so many persons who are now on the program, that's ushered. This is a government that is not in rhetoric, but by the heart. Because had it not been for the principle of this Prime Minister, we probably would have said all of the 15 constituencies first. But you came in before. So many others. I saw a photo with you advertising the government program. Well done. I saw it. And you got licks for that. I knew your, your leader wouldn't like that. <laughs> I knew your leader wouldn't like that for advertising our programs. You know, you got leaks for that. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry about that. You should not advertise the government's program. So he chastised you for that, and that's expected. But you should stand, stand, up, stand up against him and tell him this is a good program for the people of Strozel. You know, so you got leaks for that. I'm happy. Prime Minister, you heard that. He got leaks for, for advertising the program. <laughs> Point of, order? Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the member I'm enjoying his contribution, but he's misleading the house um, because I thought he would just finish with it when he said my leader chastised me, but it was not my leader who chastised me, Mr. Speaker. Just for the records, okay? <laughs> okay. Sorry about saying your leader. Somebody chastised him for sharing a good government program. Yeah, but what I'm what I'm sh what I'm sharing with you, Mr. Speaker, is that. This government, this administration in its borrowing, is putting people first. And as explained by the member for Central Castries, we are not just borrowing rec recklessly. This is part of the mission of this government, the setup, the arrangement of the estimates of expenditure, the way government accounts work. So we come in here to do due diligence on the work of the Ministry of Finance and setting the law straight. But to tell St. Lucians, that we are concerned about emptying this reservoir of young people who continue to participate in deviant behaviors. And therefore, the resources, and you will just start seeing what, on, what, what, is, what will unfold in the social sector and the life of ordinary St. Lucians because we move with our heart as it relates to the work of St. Lucians. So I wish to applaud the Prime Minister and support the resolution that is before us. And just remember that suppose any one of you wants to build a tower, you would first have to sit down.
count the costs, sit down, and work out the estimates before you build it. Thank you very much.